Hey everyone, welcome back to Manga Storian. I created this little video series here called the One Piece Reading Club. I just got into One Piece for the first time ever about six months ago, and every time I read 20 chapters to a full arc, it's somewhere in there, I make a video discussing my opinions and thoughts on everything that's going on. When we last left off, I was at 258, and I'd gotten through the Jaya portion of the Skypea arc, and I had done the Ordeals portion. And I made the videos for both of those, and then I was going to make a video for the Survival arc, which was the next 20 chapters, and I didn't really have that much to say about it. And I found that to be the core issue. The survival portion of the arc, and it's funny because I was even trying to talk to Kevin, the editor, about this beforehand, and he kept talking about the interview portions, and we kept talking about stuff afterwards, but whenever I brought up the survival arc, it was almost like he half remembered it, half didn't, and I think that's the problem, because the survival arc, while we do have some featured characters in it, isn't about them. That's the big issue, I think, with Skypea is that all of our Straw Hat crew members they aren't the plot point for Skypea, but I'll get to that in a minute, why I feel that way as we get to Inaru. So the survival arc is more about Wiper and the gorillas and the rebellion and their battles against all of Inaru's men, the angels or whatever they end up calling them. What it basically boils down to is a whole bunch of fights that don't amount to anything because everyone's just getting defeated until we eventually get to five people remaining in Inaru. During the fight sequences, the only thing that stood out to me as being interesting is Chopper actually finally won against one of Inaru's guys, or at least stood a better chance than normal against Inaru's guys, and declared himself a true pirate. So Chopper had some actual character development in this, but even that was very minor, very much not, not important. And that's what I think the issue is with a lot of what happens at Skypea. None of our characters progress. There's no growth. Zoro didn't get a new sword and learn a new style. Nami didn't learn to, to deal with the others and learn to be a team player. Robin didn't discover why she's on the boat, although we, we do discover why, just she didn't, you know what I mean. It wasn't character development, she just did what she's there to do. And that's what, I, what I'm kind of getting at, because the issue I'm, I was running into, especially in the survival arc, is that our characters were just there. Luffy did the usual anime removal from the action sequence. He was inside of the snake, which by the way, the end of this whole thing, I like that snake more than Wiper and anyone else. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So anyway, the issue I had with going to the survival arc is when we were reading it and we were talking about it, my goal was to read it kind of quick. I was going to read 15 to 20 chapters. But what happened is because it just really wasn't that interesting, I ended up reading like five chapters and I would take a break and then I'd read five chapters and I'd take a break. But things do pick up. I'm not sitting here to try and, and harp on Skypea's low point. My only complaint about that low point is that it was so long because we were supposed to care about the gorillas. And I get the purpose and I'll get to that in a minute. So moving forward, Inaru eventually does show up. Um, the fight all resolves with the snake is unconscious. Luffy's still inside of the snake. There's a new little girl working with him, Isia. Uh, I think it's Isa. I think that's how they pronounce it in the anime. I did watch a few episodes of the anime because I was getting so disinterested in the manga fights, not caring about the characters. I thought maybe I could watch them in the anime version and that would make getting through this kind of sloggy point of the story easier. So I think her name was Isa, but the little girl's with Luffy. They're inside of the snake. Uh, Zoro, Robin, Ganfall, which is the knight that I called the Don Quixote at the beginning of this whole section. Uh, Wiper and Nami are all like ready to rock and fight against Inaru. And basically Inaru's like, hey, you're the last five left. Uh, someone, or there's six of us now. One of you has to die. And then all five of us are going to get on my magical golden boat. And we're going to go to the Verge. Verge or Verse or something like that. But basically sounds like he's describing heaven or like another island in Skypea. I was very unclear what that was, what Inaru's plan was. So my assumption is because he deems himself God, that is like heaven. That's where he wants to go. And that's what that is. But I assume we're coming back to whatever that is because they did kind of write a, make it kind of an important plot point that he's trying to get to this location that they're being very vague about. We also discovered the actual plot of Skypea, which also reinforced my thoughts that Skypea would have happened with or without the Straw Hat Pirates, and I think that's the biggest issue with it. So Skypea's whole plot is that the Straw Hat Pirates decided to go up into the sky, they were looking for this supposedly golden missing stuff, and they happened to get wrapped up into an adventure. Conus, the angel bug girl, she's got like antennas like a bug, but she got wings like an angel. I don't know, she's pretty chill. Uh, she's with her father, 
Her father's finding out from one of Inaru's men that Inaru's plan is to blow up Skypea, get the golden boat, and go to the Verge. Or whatever. They go to heaven, basically. Well, I'm just gonna say that. I'm gonna say Verge, and if I'm wrong, sue me. I'm sorry. We all know that I can't pronounce anything properly. So anyway, we discover the actual plot that Inaru's plan is to destroy everything and leave. That would have happened with or without the Straw Hat Pirates there. Which I do find to be a little bit different than our previous plots. Because things like Alabasta, yes, would have kind of happened without the Straw Hat Pirates. But since they had Vivi with them, they were more integral to the actual plot of what was going on over there. Robin was a part of the actual plot. Vivi was a part of the actual plot. Her relying on, the, on Luffy and friends to help her out was all a part of the character growth of Luffy and the crew. Along with them being actually incorporated into what's going on with that. When we go back to like Logtown and Arlong, that has a ton to do with Nami and all those characters being involved in there. We find out more about Gold Roger and all those characters. And we find out about Luffy's progression and his brother and stuff like that. So everything up until now has involved the Straw Hat Pirates, even on a minor level, which would then help them gain more character growth, develop as individuals, as a part of the crew, the team, or just individuals in general. And I think that's the problem with Skypea. Because once they revealed the main plot, which is around the mid to the end of the survival game, where Konus' father backhands her off a cliff, she falls off, he gets nuked, and we discovered Inaru's plan is to destroy Skypea. So Inaru then gets down to the last five of them, or six of them, and he's like, you guys got to kill each other. They all decide they're going to fight against Inaru, which basically means Zoro, Ganfall, Wiper, and uh, Robin basically get removed. They're all defeated and knocked out. And Nami joins Inaru to go in his golden boat to go into space or the verge or wherever he's going to go. Luffy finally gets out of the snake with Isa or uh, uh, not Isa. Well, that would definitely, well, maybe that is it. I don't know. Gets out of there with the little girl and they go up to try and fight Inaru and save Nami because they know that Nami's on the boat. This was awesome because Inaru has an insane amount of power. And I've got the note for it here. They called it something specific. And I've been told that it's important, so remember the name of it. <laughs> so I wrote it down. The Rumble Rumble Devil Fruit, which is a special kind of devil fruit giving crazy powers. That's all I got. But it's awesome because Inaru has the power of a god. He can even restart his heart on the one time he did actually lose a fight. So Luffy's fighting against him, but Luffy's made out of rubber. So Inaru can't actually damage Luffy, which is why I really enjoyed this fight. Because Inaru can't damage Luffy, but Inaru has the ability to see what Luffy's going to do. Like, almost read his mind. <clears throat> and Luffy went Ultra Instinct before Ultra Instinct was even a thing. He's like, if I don't think, you can't read my thoughts. And he was just using instinct to dodge everything. I'm like, holy crap, that got me wondering. And I'm sure there's some kind of power scaler out there who wants to argue this. Would Goku or Luffy win? Who would win that fight? Because Luffy had Ultra Instinct long before Goku had Ultra Instinct. But, you know, that's probably an argument for a whole nother day. Probably need to get someone that's more of an expert on that kind of stuff. So anyway, their fight starts going on. And what ends up happening, and I thought this was really cool, since Inaru can't damage Luffy, and Lu Luffy can't move fast enough to damage Inaru, Inaru's plan is to nuke the gold around Luffy, attach it to his arm like a ball, and just kick him off the boat. <laughs> I was like, I guess, I mean, that works. You've done it. Which leads to him falling to the bottom. Robin wakes back up. She's starting to take care of everybody. They're all trying to figure out what's going on. Most of the crew is disabled and unable to do anything at this point, but they're all starting to show back up. While Luffy is kicked off the boat, that's when Sanji and Usopp finally wake up. They've been out of the adventure for like 60 chapters at this point. And they decide to go save Nami. And I think this is Sanji's greatest moment up to this point in the story where he... They, he him and Usopp have the discussion that one of them might have to stay and die to save Nami. And the joke is that it's going to be Usopp, but it's Sanji. Usopp and Nami get away, and Sanji gets nuked, like, zapped, like, crazy. And he just looks at Inaru, and he's like, thanks. I needed a light. And then he takes a puff and just hits the ground. And I'm like, oh, what an awesome ending for him. I mean, he ain't dead. No one's dead. That, that's one of my complaints of Skypea. Even Konus' father is alive in the ending, and he got nuked beyond belief and was a nobody. But anyway, the battle with them continues onward, and we all discover this was like the second reinforcing that the Straw Hat Pirates did not matter to this story, which is my issue with it. Um, we take a break. Luffy gets back on the boat, and we just stop. Like, that's... 
we're going to change the story for a minute. We go anywhere between five to eight chapters telling the story of Nolan the Liar. And I can't remember his name, but it's like Kamada or Kamita, something along those lines. Okay. And we hear the story about how Nolan the Liar was an explorer. And we go on this other adventure explaining how he arrived. He met the people that became Skypea, the original descendants of the gorillas. And they became super friends and they all worked together. And then Nolan chopped down the trees, which insulted the tribe, but he didn't know it. And he did it to save them. And it was, it was a pretty touching story. I won't lie. When we first shifted over to Nolan the liar, I was like, oh, I don't even care. I mean, I don't I, I would turn the pages this way, but yeah. I, I didn't even care. So at the first like couple of pages, I was just kind of skipping through, but it became very interesting very quickly. But it's really the final nail in the coffin for me that kind of reinforced the idea that Skypea is not about the Straw Hat Pirates. It's about Noland and the Gorilla and the Inneru and Gonfall and all these characters. It's an entirely different story that I almost feel like wasn't needed for the whole... Now, I know it comes back later. Everyone says it's important later. It's important later. I get that. But I can see where the complaints of Skypea would come in because it doesn't feel like it's needed at all. It feels like it's filler, like it's not meant to be there, like Oda wanted to write a different story, but he needed to put it in with the Straw Hats, so they had to go on this adventure. Anyway, we find out that Nolan and crew are trying to work with the characters, and we find out why he's dubbed a liar, how he got killed and called a liar, and we discover what happened to that chunk of land and how it went up into space. It was a part of the verge or the verse, or whatever you want to refer to it, but they used the the like the spray of water to launch that portion of the island up, which is how it got lost up there. And then for 400 years, the gorillas were fighting against the people of Skypea. And that's how this whole battle started. And the whole battle was coming down to the golden bell. And if the golden bell can ring, the fighting will end. And at first it was just a pointless side story, but I started getting more into it and enjoying it and I really liked it. And that's why I said I liked the snake because the snake ate Luffy, was fighting everybody, was causing all kinds of problems. But in that background story, that snake gets a background. We discover that the original snake was treated as a god, but Nolan killed that snake. And then the baby snake got killed by Nolan or the other guy. No, it got killed by Kamada or however you say his name. The, the super descendant of the gorillas, they got killed by him. And then Nolan and that guy raised the super baby, super, super baby snake. And that baby snake will dance if the golden bell can ring. And I was like, oh, I love the snake. <laughs> so eventually we get back to the main plot and it turns into Inaru and Luffy both want to ring the bell. Whoever rings the bell, their, their wishes are going to come true. While this is going on, Inaru is doing this like crazy black hole storm that he's going to use to nuke Skypea. And he gets the first one out and creates a crater. But Konus convinced everyone to leave and saved the people of Skypea. But now the bigger one's forming and it's going to take out the rest of the islands floating in the sky. Luffy is in the battle at this point. Sanji's been knocked out. He's been nuked. All the other characters are trying to find their way to Luffy. And Luffy, using I don't know what kind of power, is just sprinting up the side of this beanstalk, dragging this gold ball behind him, and just going up top. And then using... I, I, I no longer think Luffy's stupid, uh, like to the levels that I used to think in the story. Because he uses the traje trajectory of the storm with the gold in his arm to like catapult stuff and just angle it perfect to get it back at Inaru. And I'm like, okay, he definitely knows what he's doing. Because I know all the way back in, like, the Alabasta and the, and the Arlong stuff, I was like, it's weird because it feels like Luffy knows what he's doing, but I also wonder if he does. And other than some weird comments where he just doesn't understand basic stuff, yeah, he definitely knows what he's doing. He wouldn't have done that move against Inaru if he knew what he was doing, if he didn't know what he was doing. Going back, looking at some of my notes over here, I can also just kind of go off in general just as the third confirmation that the Straw Hat Pirates didn't even need, be, need to be a part of this whole storyline for it to happen, Nami's trying to get Luffy to leave. They're like, we can't fight Inaru. Let's just leave. Skypea isn't our problem. And they're right, because Skypea isn't their story. Skypea is a different story they're a part of. But Luffy decides he wants to ring the bell for Mont Blanc Cricket to prove the bell is real, that Nolan the Liar isn't a liar, and that everything is accurate. The guy that they met all the way back in Jaya who at this point I want to say was like 60 to 70 chapters back. So anyway, getting back to the actual story, Luffy does this crazy move against 
Inaru's ultimate move, using the gold ball. He uses it to knock out Inaru and drops him, and that's the end of the battle between Luffy and Inaru. And I haven't watched the anime for this por portion of the fight yet, and I want to before I move forward. Because even in the manga, it was just epic and awesome. And it's so cool the way he worked it out to jump with Nami and do all of this crazy stuff. And it all worked out really well. And then the story has like five chapters of wrap up where it's just epilogue. And I actually really loved this moment because Robin goes and she translates the tablets. And we discover that there is an ultimate weapon and that the tablets either lead to the ultimate weapon or they lead to the next tablet. And that there's another weapon, I think... The notes here say Poseidon, but I don't remember that off the top of my head. I don't know if I read that in the wiki that it was Poseidon, but basically she knows about a weapon's location because of the slab up there. And you find out that the gorillas don't care about the gold. The gold means nothing in Skypea. They're trying to protect the slab that will point to the next location, and she's the only one that can read it. But what's interesting is at the end of the reading, at the end of the whole thing, the person who signed that tablet was Gold D. Roger. Which Gonfall then brings back Gold D. Roger is the guy that came up so many years ago. And then we also discover that Monkey D. Luffy. And so Gonfall says something about the D's and what they mean. And we're back to that big mystery of what is the D? What is the D? But anyway, obviously there's more linking up to that at this point. And Robin now has information on this ultimate weapon that we're now going to go after. So obviously Skype is going to, the stuff that happened in here is going to come back up later in the plot. But it, I, it just, the story felt weird because it's the first time since reading One Piece that it wasn't about somebody. That it wasn't about our heroes or our crew or somebody that they just met. It was this whole side thing that they kind of went on, got a, got a, became a part of. But as they became a part of it, it also became their one of their core stories and focuses. I don't know how to say it. Googling online Skypea just to get general reactions because, because this is the first part that I slowed down my reading because it just wasn't as engaging, wasn't as interesting. I was curious on the general public's opinion. And I saw that a lot of people, Skypea seems to divide a lot of fans who either really like it or you really hate it. And I don't see very many people that just kind of fell in the middle. And that's kind of where I am with it. I feel like half of it was just there to have some cool fight sequences. But if you don't care about the Straw Hat Pirate, if you don't care about that that crew, you only want the Straw Hat Pirates, then you're going to dislike it. Like I disliked the survival games portion. But the overall adventure was really epic. I mean, Luffy fought against a god, or a kami slash god who's not really a god but has crazy powers. We discovered that Robin's not useless, like I said 50 chapters ago. She can read all these things. She can push things forward. Chopper got to feel like a pirate for the first time. Sanji got the coolest line out of the entire sequence. Usopp was there. Yeah. And Nami now can do this, like, jet ski thing. That's cool. Zoro, my favorite character, didn't really do much in this whole arc. He got the battle against a few guys, show how cool he was, but nothing crazy happened. And my new favorite animal is the snake. I don't know if I like the, the whale or the snake more. I don't know which one of those. But yeah, that's why, if you're wondering why it took me so long to get to the next chapter of our One Piece reading club, it's because I don't have a lot of things to say about this portion. There's a lot of reveals. There's a lot of stuff coming up. I'm excited to see where this is going to go. And I've already started up the next chapter. The Foxy Pirates, or what are they called? The Foxy, the Silver Fox... Foxy Pirates. We're going to, I don't know, Kevin kept calling them Foxy Pirates, so we're going to see Foxy Pirates. That's an, I've already started reading up on that portion, and I've already met the, the I know I jokingly said Gonfall reminded me of Don Quixote. What's with this guy with the freaking, like, the pink frilly stuff and the glasses? He showed up. I haven't read far enough to know who that is yet. <laughs> but I'm excited to get past Skypea. I can see where a lot of the complaints came in. If you wanted to just see more about the main characters, this was not the arc for you but it does feel like it was needed to build out the world. One of my favorite things that happened at this is during the epilogue, they explained every mystery. Like they even explained, oh, what were those shadows, those giant shadows? Oh, that was, if the sun was hitting Skypea just right, then the shadows would have been sprawled across the water, making them appear to be giants. Okay, well, that's a little weird because we already met giants. So I'm assuming the giants are coming back, but at least those giants aren't giants. Those giants are shadows. But they explained everything. They explained how the island went up into, up into the area. They explained Gonfall's role and how he lost his stuff. We got we explained why the gorillas are fighting against... Like, I didn't come out of Skypea with very many questions other than what Robin read at the ending. So that's where we are right now. I'm excited to see what's going to be happening next. I am now officially, for those who are tracking, we are up to Chapter 303. 
And I'm splicing in anime watching with this uh, just so I can kind of pick up the pace a little bit. I typically read about 10 to 15 issues of comic books a day and a chapter of manga equates to one issue of a comic book. So if I have to get up and read, you know, 10 issues of Marvel, two issues of DC, I don't have a lot of time left over to read a lot of manga. So in order to space that out, I'm trying to watch some of the anime so it ties in, because the anime is almost a carbon copy of the manga. So my pronunciations are probably gonna get better and I might have a little bit to say about the voice acting and stuff like that as we're going. As I said in my uh, Dark Hero arc from My Hero Academia, sometimes the anime portrays things in a much better light than it does in the manga. Just like the manga can do a better job at times, the anime can do a better job at times. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I don't think this was as bad as people say. I enjoyed it. Um, I see where the complaints come in. My complaint is I wanted more crew development, but that's not that big a deal because we are, this whole sequence takes place between 237 to 302. We're way late in the story. We've had a lot of character development, so it was time to see how our characters react to things. It kind of reminded me to an extent of Metal Gear Solid 1 to Metal Gear Solid 2. For those of you guys who don't know, Metal Gear Solid 1 featured Solid Snake, gaming icon, right? Metal Gear Solid 2 featured Raiden. And if you read into the development like history of it, the reason was they wanted you to see how Snake reacts to things. Instead of you being Snake, they wanted you to see Snake. And I felt like that's what we were doing with Skypea. Instead of seeing, like, instead of feeling like we are the Straw Hats and we're seeing how they react, we wanted to see their direct response. I guess that's the best way to put it. Because we always see how they react, but their response to things going on around them. Nami wanted to ditch Interview. Luffy's like, uh-uh, I'm ringing that bell for Mont Blanc Cricket. So, we'll see what happens. Also, fun fact, I loved the uh, little epilogue moment where the uh, Luffy and them were stealing gold under the opinion of, well, we're pirates, they should expect it. And Robin's coming back and they're trying to give them the gold. So the Straw Hats are all running away and like everyone's like, no, we want to thank you. And Robin's like, I guess they don't want the gold. And that was fun. And they got, they ended up running away with the gold anyway. So now they're going to go hire a navigator. No, not again. Now he's a navigator. Carpenter. We're doing a carpenter now. We're going for a carpenter on the crew. And Luffy brought up a musician and everyone said no. But a musician would be funny. Anyway, if you want to continue, we are currently reading at 303. My next video will be 303 to 320. So we'll do whatever this foxy pirate portion is. Um, and we're also working on a couple other things. Kevin and I are going to be talking about Jojo anime very soon. My wife and I are going to talk about Demon Slayer and Trigun. I'm going to have a few more of those collaborative kind of things. Kevin and I are buying each other mystery gifts to open up and see who can get better statues. And I'm going to continue reading as much manga as I can get my hands on. Thank you guys for your support. I'll see you next time right here.